Hello everybody, welcome to Haunted Valley. My name is Colin, I will be your tour guide tonight. I will be showing you all of Penn State's most spooky and haunted parts. Uh, so many of you probably already know our school was founded in 1855 as the Farmers High School and has since grown to what we have here today. Over 40,000 undergraduates, it's a huge place and uh, along the way we've picked up many spooky stories, many spooky characters have stuck with the university since its founding again in 1855. Um, so we're right in the middle of a spooky time of, of the year with all the midterms going on and everyone's getting all their midterms grades back. But um, right now we're in West Halls, uh, which is where a lot of students will end up living in their time at Penn State. So on uh, a sidetrack, we'll talk about the, um, Old Coley. So Old Coley is Penn State's first mascot. Um, we all know that our, our beloved mascot now, the Nittany Lion. Um, however, mascot used to be a mule named Old Coley. He was a real mule. He helped build Old Main. He uh, carried the limestone. Um, from the quarry down the street um, to, the, to what is Old Main now. Um, so his bones have been uh, in different areas on campus uh, throughout, the, throughout the years. They're currently in the hub uh, near the Freeman Auditorium in the back. Uh, but one of the areas that they used to be was actually in Watts Hall, which is up the hill a little bit here in West Halls. Uh, so students live there now and uh, wherever his bones have been located on campus, people have reported um, hearing and um, seeing uh, a ghost of a mule walking around, hearing some hooves clattering, which really uh, you know, can drive people crazy, especially when they're studying in the middle of the night. So one of the uh, dorms in the West Halls is the engineering uh, building. So there are a lot of engineering students here studying late at night. Um, and again, you know, it can drive you crazy when you're hearing these hooves walking around in the middle of the night. Uh, you're studying for long hours. You're thinking, am I hearing something? Am I going crazy? Or is there actually a, a God, mule running? Here. Oh boy. We, did, we were just studying for our engineering exam when all of a sudden we heard hooves coming from the second floor. We didn't know what it was. So we went upstairs to investigate. We didn't see anything. No animal, no person, nothing. I tried to convince them that nothing was there. I wasn't that scared. But when we went back downstairs to go studying, we heard braying, a donkey braying. Wait, do you hear that? I think it's coming. You guys gotta get out of here before it gets you. Go, go, go. <laughs> well, we have a sense of urgency here apparently. Um, but you know, definitely can't blame old Coley for haunting the areas that he's been on campus. I mean, we kind of, you know, gave him the boot by switching the Nittany Lion, or to the Nittany Lion as our mascot. So we kind of shoved him under the rug there. But we do still love him despite those actions. We do still have his bones on campus in the hub. Um, when he was a, a living mule on campus. Uh, seniors used to like to play a prank on the freshmen. They would bring um, Old Coley up to the top of the Old Main Bell Tower. And mules can't really walk down steps, so they would force the freshmen to carry him down the steps. Just all more reason for Old Coley to probably not be too happy in the way he was treated there. So right behind me, uh, you can kind of see it off in the distance now, is the Ilsen Cottage. Uh, right now it's a home to some um, offices for um, arts and humanities. However, it was originally a uh, small hospital. So way before we had Mount Nittany Medical Center, uh, this was a hospital and you can imagine the technology they had was a little bit more crude than the technology we have today. Uh, you know, some saws, everything like that. And medical technology, not as good as it is today. So uh, probably a lot more um, botched surgeries and everything like that. So people have reported seeing and, and hearing, um, you know, distraught nurses and uh, doctors walking around as well as uh, some patients that uh, whose surgeries have not gone too well. So that nurse did not seem too happy, probably spent um, a lot of time, uh, you know, extra time in the cottage or in the uh, hospital rather, uh, helping her patients out. In the, that's a demanding area that can definitely require a lot of stress. Oh no! <laughs> Seems we've acquired one of the patients. Um, Maybe he had a surgery that went bad or something like that. So, um, but I hear zombies cannot walk too fast. So, uh, as as quickly as we get away from them, the zombies will no longer be with us. All right, everyone. So we're walking by the Petit Paternal Library now, um, home to some many late nights for students studying for their uh, midterms and homeworks and everything like that. Um, so decades ago, there was a student named Betsy. She was studying late at night in what we now know as the stacks. Um, she was all alone. Uh, she was studying. She was actually working to go work for the Peace Corps. Uh, when in the middle of the, in the middle of the night, someone came up behind her and stabbed her. To this day, they have not uh, found a murderer, uh, the murderer. Um, so it's still a uh, haunted mystery at Penn State. It was 1969. I went up to the second floor of the stacks to do some research. 
As I went up there, I started to hear some footsteps. I didn't know where it came from. I tried to get a glimpse, but I could not find them. At that exact moment, I was stabbed from the back. The knife went all the way through to the front of my heart. I fell to the ground. The people below solely thought that it was just a stack of books that may have fallen, but no, I was murdered. As my murderer left, he went downstairs to the bottom floor of the library and told them, you might want to go up there and check on that girl. As the people came up, they thought I'd maybe have just fainted because the blood ran perfectly with my red dress. To this day, I will still haunt the stacks and my murderer is never known. Hopefully one day we will find out, but until then, I'll be sure to continue to haunt the students as they study late at night in the stacks. Yeah, so definitely some really spooky stuff there. So uh, that is reason number one why you will not find me studying late at night in the stacks. I will definitely find somewhere else to go study uh, when, when I need to do that. Um, definitely don't want to have some ghosts coming up to me or, you know, even some uh, spooky murderers or anything like that. I like to have a little noise rather than the quiet uh, parts of the stacks. So right now we're in the area of campus known as the Petit Mall. Uh, so you can see it's pretty built up here. Um, everything has really been expanded up here. Um, so it's a popular area to walk during the regular school days. Um, however, this all used to be heavily forested. Actually, there, if you're familiar with the horticultural woods all the way up by Park Avenue, it's just a small bunch of trees essentially. Uh, that used to stretch all the way back here, uh, back to Old Botany, which we'll see uh, in just a bit. Um, so that was a really heavily forested area, nothing up there but the trees. Um, so decades ago, this was a popular spot for students to, to go and kind of have some privacy. So maybe some, some lovers or people who just want to get away from it all, anything like that. Um, this is the place to go. Uh, but naturally, you know, there's no light over here, no buildings, no maps, paths, anything like that. So it's a, an easy place to get lost in the middle of the night. So definitely a, um, a risk that is something, uh, you know, some students would take the risk. Um, I probably wouldn't myself. Uh, it's, I think it's definitely nice that we have all the maps around campus. It's not easy to get lost anymore. Have you seen her friend? You do not need to find him. You've got to keep looking. So I'm not exactly sure who their friend is that they're looking for, but I do have an idea. So decades ago, when this was all heavily forest, there was forested, there was a student who came out here by himself, maybe who's trying to find a date who ultimately stood him up. Maybe he was just trying to find some privacy, but it was in the middle of a bitter cold state college winter. Um, and you know, he did not make it out alive, unfortunately. I'm so So like I said, this forest extended from Old Botany all the way up to Park Avenue. So we're coming up on Old Botany now. It is the oldest unaltered building on campus. So now it's just home to some offices. Um, but it is also home to another spooky uh, figure at Penn State. So many of you may know across the street behind the construction uh, fence that is over there, President George Atherton's grave is right there. Um, so his wife has been known um, to haunt Old Botany. Uh, there have been pictures taken, uh, some old gray, uh, gray and white photos of faculty in front of there and they've seen kind of a shadowy figure up in the top right corner of Old Botany. So they say that this is um, Mrs. Atherton looking over her husband's grave. Apparently she's not too pleased about um, his resting site being not so peaceful with thousands of students walking by here on Pollock Road every single day. Um, this used to be more uh, of a quieter area on campus, so there used to be some red roses uh, planted right around the grave site. That was the couple's favorite uh, flower, so they really cherished that site uh, since it was, at the time, a peaceful area. However, um, you know, nowadays, not so peaceful, especially with all the construction going on here. You can imagine uh, Mr. and Mrs. Atherton would not be too pleased about that um, since there are so many people and so much disturbances uh, going by them every single day. So we'll head up this path here. Uh, it looks like we have a, a spooky figure over there. Uh, maybe it looks like Mrs. Atherton herself. Um, so let's go check it out. We'll see what, uh, what's going on up here. When my sweetheart Georgie died in 1906, many people wanted to bury him outside of me. But I believed he should be buried somewhere a little more private, a little more secluded, a place where I could watch over him. After years of hard work and dedication to this university, my Georgie was laid to rest in a quiet part of the room right over there behind Schwab Auditorium. His grave was surrounded by his favorite flower, red roses. George was my greatest love in life and in death. Even after my passing, I continue to watch over his grave and all who come near it. It just so happens that right here in Old Botany is the best place to watch over his grave. When you're walking to class, 
might see me peering out from one of the hazy upstairs windows. Many people working there late at night say that sometimes I flicker the lights or unplug the computers. What can I say? When the flowers outside of George's grave look a little shabby, I start to act up. I've even moved a few objects or two back there because people are afraid. But can you blame me? Those students pass by George's grave, trample over his flowers without a second glance? It's disrespectful. My George, the second founder of this university, he gave everything for Penn State. If only we could. Wow, so that really was a spooky tell. Uh, you, can, you can really, uh, Mrs. Atherton really showed us that she is not too pleased about um, her husband's resting site across the street now. Um, so it looks, there's a dapper looking guy over there. Uh, we'll check him out. He looks like he may be, you know, a president from uh, an earlier time in Penn State's history, early 1900s. So, um, you know, maybe this is Atherton himself who came out of his, his grave to uh, see what all the commotion's about. Hello, students and friends of Penn State. My name is President George Atherton. I believe you were just speaking with my wife across the way. Ain't she a gem? I served as Penn State's eighth president from 1882 to 1986. But before actually coming to Penn State, I had a job at Rutgers. As soon as I got an offer to come to Penn State, I made the move as quickly as possible because we're way better than Rutgers, that's for sure. Anyway, I absolutely loved my time working here. Unfortunately, when I passed away in July of 1906, they had to find a place to bury me. Of course, they decided to place me right in the middle of campus because of my dedication to this place. Um, you can't really see the grave right now because of the construction signs and fences. And trust me, I'm really annoyed about it too. I'm literally rolling in my grave. But it's, you know, uh, once the fences are down and everything, uh, please stop by when you're walking up and down Pollock Road. As a president, I love to interact with some of the other students and members of our coastal community. And as a ghost, I also love to meet even if you're a little creeped out with me. So, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your tour, learning all about our Haunted Valley of Penn State. Well, wow, thanks President Atherton. I hope, uh, you know, the rest of your days down there are a little bit more peaceful than they are here. So, right now, uh, we are walking by Schwab Auditorium. Uh, it is one of the... Uh, <clears throat> right now, we are walking by Schwab Auditorium. Uh, it is most known for being the home for the Penn State Thespians, they perform here as one of the longest running student organizations on campus. Um, so it really is a beautiful building inside and out, but it is also known as one of Penn State's spookiest and most haunted buildings. Um, so most notably, there is uh, supposedly a ghost of a janitor, a former janitor, who haunts um, the building itself, um, walking around the halls at night, you know, really making sure that his building is clean. Uh, you know, I've heard that he's really just a fan of the performing arts. He wants to see the thespians play. He wants to see people come in and speak. Um, I haven't met him myself, but you know, we've seen so many ghosts tonight, maybe we'll just find ourselves to be lucky tonight. Boo! Oh! Hello everybody, and welcome to the Schwab Auditorium. Now the Schwab Auditorium is known as being home to the Penn State thespians, but it's also home to me, the Schwab Jim. For many years, I worked tirelessly to make sure this place was clean from the top to the bottom. But they say a janitor's job is never truly done, and so I decided to stay. The past several decades, I, even since I passed, I have stayed and made sure this place kept up to, to, to shape. Now, students have said on multiple occasions they've heard my footsteps walk across the stage. Some have even said, They've heard my claps from the back of the auditorium echoing through. As the left free home said, they felt my fingertips go down their back. But that being said, I mean no harm. I just appreciate the full work. I even have some friends by my side. Charles Schwab, the namesake of this building, has been seen here on multiple occasions as well. Even George Atherton, my friend from around the corner, has also been seen here on many occasions. There's even been a man in a revolutionary war costume that's been seen here many times but has yet to be identified. All that being said, if you ever come here for a show, make sure you say hello because I guarantee you I'll be here. Well, and there you have it. There is the Schwab Auditorium janitor right there. Um, some people say that the people who have to, or um, people who clean it now these days, uh, don't stay there after dark because it is just a, such a spooky building. Um, and again, you heard all of those scary tales of people reporting uh, their interactions with this ghost. 
So one of the neat um, occurrences that happened here uh, was the Gansfield experiment. So some scientists would come in and they would test some subjects and essentially the experiment worked where uh, they would put white goggles over the subject's eyes. Uh, they would kind of shine a red light there and supposedly that's supposed to simulate some kind of uh, your, your senses and so that you're more sensitive to, to sights and sounds. Um, so many people independently heard, uh, reported hearing crowds cheering, lines from particular plays. Uh, in some instances they heard uh, uh, people scratching on walls. Uh, and again, in some instances uh, people reported hearing the same lines from plays independently. So really spooky stuff. Um, I can't blame them for not doing that anymore. If I was a, a scientist or a subject there, that would really uh, spook me out. So it's another place that you won't find me um, walking uh, or going through at night by myself uh, just because it is so scary. Well, that's the end of our tour. Thank you for coming on Haunted Valley Ghost Tours this evening. Uh, we had a lot of spooky characters come out today, so thanks.